Okay, so we've got three records in here. Now we're gonna build up a route that allows us to see a particular user's profile page. So we've already covered this, but it's really good just to kind of practice this stuff, iterate over it and go ahead and, you know, really get it stuck in your mind. So we obviously would have a get request here to forward slash, and you could do anything here really. You could maybe have just forward slash and then the user ID if you wanted to, if that's, if you wanted a kind of unique URL for your project. The only thing I would say here is make sure that you keep this at the very uh, bottom of all of your other routes so nothing else interferes. Now, in this case, I would probably say something like users and then slash and then maybe the username. So I'm actually gonna write in username here. I think that makes a little bit more sense. So once again, we have our closure in here. We need our request and our response in here anyway because as the third argument, we need our args in there. And we also need response because we're gonna be rendering a view out. And now in here, we just need to go ahead and grab this user. So we're gonna be handling uh, whether this user is found or not in our view. So rather than handle that here, uh, it kind of makes sense for a user profile to handle this in the view. And we're just gonna, again, use our database to query this. Now, the only thing here is we don't wanna use a raw query. Instead, we're gonna go ahead and use a prepared statement. So uh, anything that we pass in to our statement is escaped uh, automatically. Obviously what we're doing here is we're taking data from a user provided or you know anyone can provide this value. So we really wanna be careful in this case. And we're just gonna go ahead and select all columns or you could select just what you needed from the users table. And we're gonna say where the username equals and then we're just gonna give a little placeholder within PDO. Now what we can do is go ahead and execute this. So we can say user execute, passing in the data that we need to basically run this query and replace the placeholder with. And in this case, we know it's the username. So we can define our username in there. And then we know that now this comes from our args. So that is basically that query executed. And now what we can do just to kind of test this out is do a var dump on our user fetch method. And we wanna fetch this as an object as well, just so it's nice and easy to work with when we eventually do pass this down to our view. So let's go over to users slash and then the username. So in this case, maybe Alex, there is Alex's record. We can do the same for Billy and there's Billy's record and so on and so forth. So now I just wanna render a view. So let's create a view for this user's profile. Uh, in this case, what I'm gonna do is actually create a new folder. It would be nice to kind of categorize these. So I'm gonna say uh, a users folder and inside of here, I'm gonna have a profile.twig view. And then in here, we could extend our base layout. So let's do that just to kind of practice. Uh, we know that in this case, we say something like extends and then layout slash app.twig. And then we have a content block just in here. So let's just grab that. So uh, save a little bit of time. And then into here, we want to go ahead and say maybe the username in the H1. So in this case, we would say user.username. Notice we've not even passed this through yet. Usually I start to define out these first and then go ahead and pass them in. Now, obviously it doesn't matter which order you're doing them in as long as you actually do it. So we'll leave it at that for now and we'll add some more information in a minute. We know now that we can use our view container item to go ahead and render. We pass our response in. And as we know, we can either do compact and then pass in user like that. If you prefer to do that, that's fine. Or if you want, you can manually pass an array into this. Uh, of course, not forgetting to define out our new view. And in this case, it's users this time slash profile.twig. So uh, let's go ahead and pass this in and as an array. You can, as I said, use compact and we're gonna say user passing through that user. And there we go, that is as simple as it gets. So now over here, we should see that user's username. Let's go ahead and refresh over here. And of course, we need to go ahead and actually fetch the record. So we could either do this here, or of course we can do this above here. It might be a little bit better to say something like user equals user and then fetch, and then choose the style of the uh, data we want back. In this case, again, we're gonna have an object. So let's go over and refresh and we see that user's profile. Now, what happens if a profile doesn't exist? Well, let's just update this to output a little bit more information. So we did this earlier uh, when we were looking at passing data down to views, but 
let's go ahead and output the user's email just here. So user.email and let's output their full name as well in there too. So let's give that a refresh. There we go. So if they don't exist, uh, what's actually going to happen here is user is going to be false. So we can test this out by doing a var dump on user and then just killing the page down here. So let's go and provide just a load of rubbish in there and we see a false. So in this case, it's pretty easy to just go ahead and check this within our view. Now, what we could do is uh, explicitly show a 404 here, but uh, you might not want to do that. And we're going to look at responses with status codes later. So you can go ahead and update this later on. So let's just quickly look at a if statement within Twig. And in this case, what we would do is we would say if not user, so a little bit different from standard PHP. And then down here, we have to go ahead and end that if. And then what we could do is just indent this and have an else. So let's go ahead and provide that else here. And then in this case, we could say no user found or whatever you wanted to do. Now you could switch these over. So this was at the top. So you could say if user output this, otherwise no user found again, entirely up to you. So let's give that a refresh and we see no user found. But of course, when we do provide that user in there, that just works as we expect. So once you've kind of learned the basics, all of the stuff that we've already covered, these kind of things become very, very easy to do because this is really most of the time uh, what you're going to be doing when you're building up an application. Either way, that is a really simple example of using that PDO dependency that we have on our container to actually go ahead and grab a user, fetch that result, pass it down to our view and go ahead and render it out.